Careful consideration is key to ensure the safety of both the mother and the unborn child in a dental office. Hey Burst TV, I'm Gina. I'm a registered dental hygienist and a Burst ambassador extraordinaire. As dental professionals, we know that for some patients coming to the dentist already is causing anxiety. Add a pregnancy to that and we definitely want to try to help keep that anxiety and stress to an absolute minimum. Poor oral health can wreak so much havoc on systemic health especially during pregnancy. Not to mention, pregnancy itself can cause problems in the mouth as well. Dry mouth, enamel erosion, higher caries risk, gingivitis, and that's just to name a few. I'm curious, is it okay to go to the dentist when I'm pregnant? The official statement of the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists on dental care specifically is that oral conditions requiring immediate treatment, such as periodontal, endodontic treatment, extractions, restorations of untreated caries, all of these can be managed at absolutely any time during the pregnancy. I'm also wondering what the risk of miscarriage is from getting dental work done. Is that risky? As far as needed urgent dental care, it has not been shown to increase the chances of miscarriage. However, for most patients, getting that work done during the second trimester will likely be the most comfortable for them. And we know that untreated periodontal disease in pregnant women may contribute to poor pregnancy outcomes like preeclampsia and preterm and low birth weight babies. Even though more studies do need to be done here, we always preach as dental hygienists, gut oral health is crucial to our overall health and this is in pregnancy and at every stage before and after it. So let's dive into a few common considerations. Number one, medical history. This goes without saying, but you never want to treat a patient you don't know, right? So a quick run through of the stage of the pregnancy they're at, medical complications, allergies, medications that she might be taking, that's going to be a given before starting any treatment. What about x-rays? Doesn't that cause radiation for the baby? These are very, very little risk to the developing fetus, especially when you consider the infections, the pain for the patient, if the x-rays that are necessary were not taken. I always use a lead shield and I just take as few x-rays as necessary to get a diagnosis. Bottom line, consider the risk versus benefit for the patient. Local anesthetic, your usual lidocaine, articaine, these are gonna be the best anesthetics of choice. They're safe in all trimesters of pregnancy, as well as prilocaine, mepivacaine, mepivacaine. These are also safe if you have a short procedure or if the specific patient requests no epinephrine. Medications, antibiotics, uh, those are gonna be penicillin, amoxicillin, cephalexin. These are all safe uh, as far as pain medications after a procedure. Acetaminophen with a narcotic like codeine or hydrocodone if needed. NSAIDs like ibuprofen should be avoided and it is recommended to transition the patient off of the narcotic as soon as possible, just like any patient, because we wanna avoid that opioid dependence possibility. We may see patients coming in at all different stages of their pregnancy, right? So treatment considerations might be different based on every stage. So let's dive in and go through the stages. Nausea, vomiting, gag reflex, all telltale symptoms of the first trimester. My recommendation for these patients, have a cup at the ready filled with one teaspoon of baking soda and one cup of water because that way they can swish right after vomiting. As far as coming into the dental office, I usually advise patients to try to eat a small meal or even a snack before coming in because that is gonna help tremendously just keeping them comfortable, especially if we are planning on doing a procedure that requires local anesthetic, in which case, of course, they're not gonna be able to eat right away afterwards. At home, if there are any problems with the gag reflex, using a toothbrush with a much smaller head, preferably sonic toothbrush. This burst paste is a coconut salt flavor. It, I just like to use it all the time, it's my favorite toothpaste, but it has stevia, it has xylitol, and it has fluoride in it as well. And these mints, they are winter mint, sugar-free. They have stevia in them. They taste so good. I also heard that when you're pregnant, your gums bleed more when you floss. Is that a bad thing? What can I do to prevent that? Second trimester. This is when 
the gingivitis starts becoming more pronounced due to all the elevated hormonal levels. Good oral hygiene habits become even more important at this time. Pyogenic granulomas can form during this trimester as well. So if a patient has trouble with gum sensitivity, bleeding gums, I always recommend that my patients start on a routine using a water flosser, especially if string floss already has not been in their routine. The water flosser has a really soothing effect on the gums. And as the pregnancy progresses, I've actually had reports of patients getting carpal tunnel later in pregnancy, which really affected their dexterity, even to the point where she couldn't even write things down with a pen. So water flosser came in so handy. The home stretch of the third trimester. Guess what? Sitting in a dental chair, not great anymore for a patient in the third trimester. At this stage, lying flat on her back is not possible because it actually compresses the aorta and the inferior vena cava. These are the two largest blood vessels that run through the abdomen. This compression can actually reduce the amount of blood that supplies the uterus and therefore the baby. So it can also make the mother feel a little dizzy. So we definitely want to avoid having her lie flat on the back. The most comfortable position instead during this later stage of pregnancy will be lying on her side. I like to give my patients a bone pillow to support the abdomen and then another pillow or blanket that goes in between the legs right above the knees. This supports the hips while lying on her side. And some patients might even need another pillow or blanket for the lower back at this stage. Just Keep in mind, your patient may need more breaks, either to sit up, change positions, use the bathroom. So just leave enough time in the schedule to account for that. And ultimately, providing a safe space for the patient to let us know what she needs, that's gonna be the most helpful, right? It can be a very uncomfortable time in pregnancy. So ultimately, being gracious will be key, as with all our patients with a special need. So tell me, any other tips, tricks, recommendations. I would love to see them in the comments below. I love to get our community of dental professionals in on the conversation so we can all help each other out in ultimately providing the best care for our patients. And as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Come back for another video next Thursday. And don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can find out when the next one comes out.